Here we go again. This is absolutely disturbing. This is just disturbing. Not only are we trying to deal with the tsunami coming across the border, this L.A. story. Residents of L.A.'s notorious Skid Row talk about survival amid ODs, gangs, and dead rats in the walls. Now, this is just an incredible and just disturbing, disturbing story. This is a glimpse of uh, the tent cities, all these homeless people. It's just incredible. And uh, Gatham Newsom and the rest of the officials in governing California can't seem to do anything about this. They don't know. They don't care. They don't know. They don't care. I mean, I've got some ideas. I mean, I said in another video, why aren't they, um, instead of trying to renovate or throw money at somebody, hey, fix up this building because it's full of mold and all this other crap. Here's some money. <laughs> Get Just put some Band-Aids on it and let, let as many as you can in there. And these makeshift places for these homeless people. Why don't they take them to a, you know, I'm sure there's abandoned military bases all over this country. We can solve this problem. You're spending billions in New York on the migration problem? Billions. Did a video. Billions. It wouldn't even cost you that to bus them to one of these giant facilities and start processing these people and getting them off drugs and rehabilitating them. It would be brilliant. You could have uh, them trying to get their GD, have programs. You can have all kinds of stuff. And it'd probably save a ton of money. Here we go. Los Angeles' notorious 54-block downtown Skid Row area is a no-go zone for most people. Just blocks from the city's financial district. Yeah, it's just right down the street from the financial district. Luxury apartments, five-star hotels. It's a dangerous place where street gangs process and sell drugs. All over half of its 4,600 residents are unhoused. The biggest such population in the United States. That's just insanity on steroids right there. Just that paragraph. While a majority of those in Skid Row live in tent encampments, which we just saw, cars and various homeless shelters, around 2,500 people are being transitioned into 29 residents operated by the Skid Row Housing Trust. Okay. Accompanied by a police escort, the Post was able to get a rare glimpse into everyday life in one of the most impoverished corners of the United States and was confronted with block after block of drug users, largely untreated mentally ill people, and lawless behavior. Residents opened their homes and told us how fentanyl, the deadly synthetic opiate, is ruining lives and how drug overdoses have become an everyday occurrence. This is just every day. It's just another, another thing. An everyday occurrence. This didn't happen overnight. This didn't happen overnight. 4,600 homeless people. That's a city. Man, a small city. It's this this gentleman here. 
His name is Cordy Peterson. Corey Peterson. He lives in one of those single occupied uh, buildings in, in Skid Row. So it says he's been sober. And he's saying that uh, he hadn't used drugs and deals and crime. You know, he's saying he's he's been drug free. And he's basically saying the crime, the the drug deals and crimes are all in his building. And it's just gotten worse since the pandemic. There he is with his dog. He uh. I mean, this guy, he, here he is with his dog, okay, and he says, uh, he says mold has been growing on his walls at the SRO where he lives in Skid Row, where his neighbors constantly smell dead rats rotting in the walls. So... The state of California is giving money to these people who run these buildings. Yeah, where's this money going? Where's this money going? The dealers mix fentanyl with rat poisoning, roach sprays, and whatever else. And then they sit there laughing and watching to see what happens to people. When they take it, this is what Peterson Peterson says. He says he's witnessed this. He's watching this. He's witnessing this. It's intense and malicious. They mix these bad things on purpose and give it to some transgender woman who are willing to take any drug. And they are literally using them as guinea pigs. Some formal, formerly homeless, like Peterson, live in nearly 200 square foot rooms in one of the SRO buildings and share bathrooms with other residents. Could you imagine? I can't imagine. I can't imagine living like that. Good Lord. While the SROs mostly decades old formal, their formal hotels, you know, that they just put band-aids on, provide some respect for many who are battling with mental illness, crises, and drug addiction can quickly get thrust back into criminal activity there. Yeah, because it's all around them. There's no escape. Not everybody has self-control. It's hard. Peterson said mismanagement has been going on for years. So the city officials know about this. They've known about it for years. And it's just increasing, 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 and in intensifying and in, in what's happening. He said roaches and other critters are a common problem in most of the 29 city-run buildings. 29 city buildings. How much tax dollars are spent on that? Along with mold and the smell of dead rats decaying in the walls, pieces of the rotten ceiling even crumbling on and fell on one of his neighbors. Fell on one of his neighbors. Here's a pic of uh, one of the police officers. He tries to help and subdue a woman who appeared in full-blown mental health crisis. She's wandering out in a busy road. Took four of them to subdue her. I, I mean, maybe we need to have some, I mean, whatever happened to the mental institutions? The ACLU years ago. Oh, they have rights too. You know, a long time ago, probably maybe a hundred years ago, 
Y'all can research and fact check it. We did have these insane asylums. Let's say some guy's married to his wife. Maybe she has a dowry. She got money. He don't want to be married to her no more. He wants another younger woman. He'd just go claim she's crazy. And they would believe him over her. Lock her up. And then he can go get him another little gal and live ever, live happily ever after. Now, I understand we have to have some uh, some guidelines or something. You just can't throw people in some loony bin. We've all seen the movies. Somebody gets thrown in there and they don't need to be in there. I understand that. But clearly, clearly, a lot of these people, their, their, ba- their brains are probably just gone because of the drugs. Rat poisoning mixed with fentanyl? Good Lord. What, what do you ever you don't come back from that? At least not full to your full capacity that you were prior to ingesting this stuff. These poor people, homeless people, they need serious help. They need serious help. And I think my suggestion of these big, large complexes would be better than these run-down, rat-infested cockroach mold, which mold can cause all kinds of serious health problems, and mold can also cause mental problems. There could be a solution here that wouldn't cost billions upon billions of dollars, just keep chucking money at it and nothing gets done. Nothing gets done. Let's see. Patterson also alleges that those hired to manage and secure buildings are often on drugs or dealing in themselves. So obviously there's no follow-up. How are you spending this money? Who are you hiring to to run these places? Are we not doing background checks on people with some management experience? We had night clerks smoking meth with the residents in the offices, Peterson said. We finally got rid of them. But when the but when the receivership was taken over, we had a manager overdose from drugs he bought from the the janitor. Los Angeles Pete Department officers who walk the these dangerous streets, Skid Row Beat, also told the post that criminal activity and deaths have skyrocketed since fentanyl was introduced into the main drug supply by drug cartels and drug gangs that control the area. <clears throat> this just falls right back to the border. It falls right back to the border. So now we have a problem compound on top of another problem. Keep letting them flood in, flood in, flood in. The drugs can come in, come in. These poor people. People with mental illnesses, depressed, down on their luck. Want to take something to make it all go away. There are gangs who are pretending to be homeless and use the tent encampments to sell fentanyl and other drugs. The LAPD told the Post. So they're just infiltrating the homeless camps. I mean, you could look homeless, I guess, you know. You can blend right in. Where are these homeless people getting money? Is the city giving them their little their little checks? Welfare checks? They're cashing them and and then buying drugs with them? I don't know. I'm just asking questions here. Bloods and Crips. Two Los Angeles gangs have been here for, they've been there for over 30 years or more. 
it's become more sophisticated operation. Yeah, they're playing that. They're playing that. Here's a uh, accidental overdose death in Skid Row in L.A. Uh, let me see if I can uh, get this up a little bit. There you go. I mean, look at this. 2016 to 2021. I mean, that's the current stats right there. It's probably worth higher now. While the operation hasn't changed, the huge difference is how deadly it has become because of fentanyl. The sheer number of overdoses, violent crimes related to dealing and guns have become more prevalent. The cocaine and heroin epidemics were bad enough. Yeah, we know back in the day, back in the 80s, it was really, the cocaine was, was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. <laughs> But you mix this with fentanyl, and now it's even more overdose deaths. Saying it's probably the worst this person's seen in 20 years. 20 years. Fentanyl is around 50 times stronger than heroin, and a minute amount can easily lead to an overdose, even for experienced users. Overdose numbers have exploded in Skid Row, according to the latest data obtained by the Post. Fentanyl was found in the system of 66 people who fatally overdosed in 2021, almost tripling the number for the previous year, 23, according to the latest numbers from L.A. County Public Health and County Coroner's Office. In comparison to 49 died from cocaine overdoses in 2021, while 60 died from methamphetamine. Now you got this crap just pouring over the border. Border's not closed down. City's just throwing money, throwing money, throwing taxpayers' money. Federal, the federal government gives California money. That money comes from all of us across the country. All these states, they get federal funding to do things, help with schools, all this other stuff, infrastructure. We can't seem to just build a wall. There could be the solutions are kind of simple. I'm just a I'm just a humble, simple citizen. Saying, Dad, blame. Get the military down there, shut the border down. Get all these people on buses and take them to some giant encampment. A giant make a giant encampment, not a tent encampment, whether it's an abandoned uh, military base, which would probably be ideal. And start taking care of these people. You can easily single out who's mentally ill. Who just needs to get clean and needs a fresh start. Help them get some education. It could be a whole program. They're American citizens. We should be doing this. We shouldn't leave them on the streets to just rot and die and let the cartels and people keep feeding them these drugs and we're not doing nothing about it. Fentanyl overdoses can involve more than one drug as dealers are cutting fentanyl into heroin, cocaine, and other narcotics. They went on on a they went uh, the post went on a, a ride along and within 15 minutes a homeless woman ran up to the patrol car screaming that she had been assaulted by her partner. Another woman who seemed to be experiencing a drug induced mental breakdown walked aimlessly into rush hour traffic which we just saw the picture previously previously. So the it's the drugs making them crazy. 
It's probably rotting their brain. God knows what this stuff's doing. After about 10 minutes of trying to calm the woman down, he called back up. Four officers responded and initially detained her as she screamed, please stop, let her go. Take the cuffs off. I mean, this poor woman. Joseph told the police that the woman was a prime candidate for mental health intervention. Really? Obviously. Like so many others who could be seen drugged and passed out on the sidewalks. God have mercy. And those people running California, they should fear the wrath of God. Because of, look, what look, look at their citizens. Look at their citizens. But Newsom can go to the debates and be in the spin room in the back and complain about other states. It's disgusting and despicable. I'm not the smartest tool in the shed, and I don't claim to be. I'm not an educated person. I'm not an educated person. But this clearly, I don't think you need a bunch of PhDs to help your fellow man. And, the, and these people in government there are just going about their business, eating their little steaks and baked potatoes or whatever the hell they're having for dinner every night. While the rest of these people are suffering and dying and being assaulted in the streets. Drug dealing, human trafficking, and sexual assaults and other violent crimes occur all hours of the day and through the night. Of the nearly 5,000 homeless people who live in Skid Row, 44% are considered chronically homeless according to the latest data released by the Los Angeles Homeless Services, and about 56% of the homeless population are black. That is huge. That is huge. Where, where's the NAACP? Where are the people for black rights and treating blacks properly? 56% of them? Or on them streets. 24% Latino. The number of homeless people in the whole of Los Angeles County increased by 9% to an estimated 75,000 people. According to the latest count. And that was conducted in June. Over the years, Joseph said he has seen drugs distributed by Bloods, Crips, Cuban cartels. And the various tents littered all over Skid Row, adding that the ruthless illegal narcotics business knows no bounds. I've seen security guards letting the drug dealers into the buildings. Now, those are those buildings that are supposed to be helping the homeless. Okay. The veteran cop said, as he pointed to one of the buildings right here, used to be called the drop-in center. And the staff was literally supplying a 14-year-old girl with cocaine. And she would then go out and sell it. And there we did get some arrests here. It looks like the rest something. Somebody. They said they're blood gangs who set up shop outside a tent in one of the notorious drugs corners. They arrested them. A federal judge ruled in May that the city had to provide shelter or at least offer it to the unhoused by October 18. However, the Skid Row Housing Trust, the nonprofit landlord that owns the SRO buildings, had not been well run. Yeah, we know that. And is a magnet for controversy. Really? The trust was on the verge of collapse, but a judge 
at the request of Mayor Karen Bass, gave its then-headed Mark Adams the authority to draw a line of credit to manage and repair the buildings. There's more money. However, Adams resigned in June after a three-month tenure that placed the properties into additional debt while little to none of the much-needed repairs were made. Of course not. Under his watch, residents also illegally told that they would be evicted for unpaid rent. And some of the rent due was as little as $56. As little as $56. However, Adams resigned in June after a three-month tenure that replaced the properties into additional debt. Unbelievable. Pressure to oust Adams grew after reports by the L.A. Times revealed the company had previously used for receivership work had been banned from doing business in the state since 2015. Adams allegedly never paid business taxes, according to the paper. Even before Adams were brought in, the buildings ran by the trust were severe, were in severe disrepair, but still used as housing because they don't care. Let's just get them in there. Suzette Shaw, who lives in the new Genesis building in Skid Row, said that while well, security has improved in her building, drugs are still very much a problem. There was a female who lived in my floor, and they, they found her dead in an apartment last year, Shaw said. She OD'd on fentanyl. Someone else just died on my floor a few weeks ago. Shaw, who lives in one of the highly converted artist lots in the complex, said she was also assaulted as she was walking near her building. Yeah, she can't even get home safe without like mess outside, and there she is. We're going to wrap this up because that blame. unbelievable she goes on to say we have security here but I am my own best security none of them really understand what it means to be a trauma survivor she told the post people who get these jobs are sometimes not culturally competent or trauma informed when they are dealing with the most fragile people on a daily basis there's a lot of disrespect sometimes in re-triggering her trauma <clears throat> Joseph added how the narcotic teams recently cleared out fentanyl and other drugs from one of the more well-known dealing tents at 7th and Wall Street, but the dealers all returned two weeks later. The drug dealing tents are still just steps away from the two low-income buildings that house formerly homeless people. He worries that L.A. County's new zero bail policy will cause yet another uptick in crime. There we go. There we go. There we go with the policies. Zero bail. Thank you, the leaders of California. The policy, which went into effect October 1st, allows criminal suspects accused of nonviolent, non serious crimes to be released immediately without bail. So, if they pick up one of these Bloods or Crips or cartel people, yeah, we saw him, we saw him hand him some drugs, we saw him hand him something, we arrest him, but, but we gotta just re release them. Then they're right back out doing the same thing. Not holding people accountable because now they're saying it's not serious. Well, Dad, blame it. This is serious. People are dying. They're losing their minds. They'll never be the same again. That should be a crime. They should be thrown in prison for life. Joseph said he expects crime will increase as addicts trade whatever stolen goods they have with dealers and other addicts in order to maintain high that high yeah the new security in the buildings are doing a good job so far to keep out dealers 
but it never ends, Joseph says. And now this new policy allows criminals to know that they are no consequences to their actions. She goes on to say, I expect things to get even more worse. No consequences. All those riots we saw, all those breaking in just a few days ago, what, a week ago? The girl running around, oh, we got, they got phones, we got phones. And she was eventually arrested. It's because we don't want to arrest them. We don't want to bother with it. This is the problem. Border needs to be closed down. You need to arrest these people and keep them in jail. Stop no bail crap. I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do, people. I don't know what we're going to do. But this, this article is disturbing. And this is happening all over the country. We've got to pull together and do something about this. And there you go. That's what's happening.